Okay, so good day. Uh, today we are going to discuss the torsion problem we've had in the midterm exam. So before we are going to solve for the particular problem, let us have a recap on the principles and key concepts regarding uh, torsion or torsional stress. So first, we should know that uh, the torque is caused by twisting is actually the force times the distance or in short the unit should be newton millimeter or it could be in a pounds foot or a pound per inches so it could also be newton newton meter kilonewton meter or mega newton meter so anyway uh, for consistency i suggest that we stick to this unit for si and for this unit for english so upon this when there is twisting of course there will be an angle of twist out of it so angle of twist was derived by this expression tl all over jg where in t here is the torque in newton millimeter l here is the length of the shaft in millimeter j is the polar moment of inertia so for circular shaft we have pi all over 32 for a solid shaft we have this formula d raised to 4 and if we have a hollow shaft we'll just have to, de to deduct the diameter of the smaller circle okay so that's for the polar moment of inertia g is the moment uh, the modulus of rigidity so this is synonymous to modulus of elasticity in actual deformation so it's only that that this modulus is concerned with twisting okay so just the same modulus of rigidity g could be in terms of megapascals okay but in most problems it is in terms of gigapascal so all we have to do is to multiply it by 1000 and if we are dealing with the torque ano? say the torque is is actually applied to a shaft that is rigidly fastened to a certain uh, wall or reaction wall re or reaction it is restrained on one end or it could be restrained on both ends now how how shall we treat the problems so if one of the end is restrained at one side say these are subjected to torques at different location okay of course there will be a reaction torque at the end so it depends on what on which shall prevail on these values so how how shall we treat this say if we have torque a torque b and torque c so all we need is to sum up all this torque and then the, re the result will be resisted by the restraining torque here okay say so this is a restraining torque say so this is torque at restrained um, side so how shall we do this so it is simple ano? we'll just have to convert the torque if the torque is clockwise 
just denoted denote that by a double rightwards arrow and if your torque is counterclockwise just denoted denote it by a double arrow that is towards left okay so say we'll just have a values here okay say if we have here 100 this is 50 and uh, this is 70 75 so what we do is to convert that 100 into double arrow towards right say this is 100 and then another torque here say this is uh, 50 okay that is 50 and uh, that is counterclockwise so let us denote that by double arrow leftwards say so this is 50 and at the end we have clockwise so that is denoted by double arrow that is 75 okay so now that we have this uh, torsion, we can easily sum up that one to come up with the result, resulting torque. If you notice, 100 and 75 will just combine because they go with the same direction. So that is 175 and the leftwards uh, torque that is 50. So therefore, it is obvious that we will be needing a supplemental reaction here okay how much 175 minus 50 and that is equal to 125 so therefore we can simply uh, we can easily acquire the reaction if if the the shaft is supported only along one side okay so madali lang yan kasi isa lang yung reaction all we need is just to sum up the torque force on the shaft now how about how about our uh, angle of twist so angle of twist is simple we will just have to label each segment Okay, when we say each segment, nasan ba yung mga torsion? Of course, we are going to consider the point of application of the torque as a segment. So, dire-diretso yan, pero dito kasi may, may mga torsion. So, therefore, let us consider that as a segment. So, A, B, C, D. So, ganun lang. So, name all the segments and all you have to do. If you are concerned with theta B, okay, with theta B or rotation at B, that will just be equal to theta from A to B, okay? And if we are concerned with the rotation at C, that is simply equal to theta AB plus theta BC. And if we are concerned with theta D, that is just simply equal to theta AB plus theta BC plus theta CD. So as simple as that. Now, how, how shall we treat this one? So of course, your theta is this uh, expression, TL over JG. All you need is to get the JG here when we have a constant um, cross section then we have a common denominator but if not you must have to express each of these terms on its corresponding JG okay now uh, no problem with the L because L is predetermined. So, alam natin kung nasan nakalocate yung normally that is given, ano? 
alam natin kung nasaan na nakalokit yung mga point of application of the torque. So, may mga given values yan. So, no problem with this, no problem with that, and with that. So, how about torque? How shall we obtain that one? So, all we need is to cut section. Of course, we are going to uh, apply our knowledge in section method okay so if we are concerned with that tab torque at ab so let us consider section ae okay so at that section we can cut that one and consider the left portion only okay say so this is the cut portion ano? so we'll just have to consider here the torque that was included in the section say so this is one two five so obviously TAB is equal to 1 to 5. Okay? And that is actually positive rotation. Why positive? You can see here that is that is a tensile. Okay? So we we express that in the positive rotation. So if we are concerned with the BC of course, we're going to consider again a section here. Say section, that is section BB. So, on that, uh, illustrating that one. Okay, so this is the cut section. So, we include here 100 and 125 here. Okay, so this is leftwards and that is rightwards. And obviously, for equilibrium, this should be rightwards, right? That is 25. So if you notice, again, we have a tensile orientation. And that rotation is positive, so take note of that. Okay, so... What about this? So, of course, you can consider this for convenience. Okay, see, this is section CC. See, that is uh, 75. Of course, and obvious, so obvious that this TCD is 75. And that is tensile, that is a positive rotation. And all of those values will just be substituted if you want to determine some of the rotations at any point. Okay? So, that's it. That's the um, key concept on the torsion. What about if we have a torsion that is restrained at both ends? So, that is a different story. See if this is the shaft and it is restrained at both ends. Okay. And again, we have an applied tor tor torque here at a series of uh, distances. Of course, there, there should be a reaction. Okay. At both supports. And remember, if we are going to label all of the segments, the same procedure, no? La label all of the point of the application of the torsion. So, if we are concerned with theta B, that is just equal to theta AB. And we will just be concerned with tor torque at AB because we will just have to imply this TL over JG. If we are concerned with theta C, and uh, we will just consider theta AB plus theta BC and if we are concerned with theta D it is theta AB plus theta BC plus theta CD and if we are concerned with uh, the rotation AE that is actually equal to 0 when when the shaft is uh, restrained at both ends, there will be no rotation. Okay? Take note of that. There will be no rotation at 
supports. Okay? Meaning, your rotation at A will be equal to 0. And your rotation at E, as well as rotation from A to E. Okay? So, the key to the solution on this one is that we'll just have to use that concept. When we have a restrained uh, shaft, remember that rotation is zero. Okay? At A to E, the summation. Okay? Because that is locked on this portion. Therefore, it is restrained. Hence, there will be reaction torque at A and reaction torque at E. So, that is the basic concept. And if you are going to apply this, that is just equal to theta AB plus theta BC plus theta CD and theta DE. That will be equal to zero. And from this, you can get values you wanted. Okay. So, let us now consider this example. So, in this case, say, uh, going to enlarge this one. Two steel solid shafts are joined by a circular plate and four pieces bolt as shown. A mismatch in the bolts is observed to be 10 degrees, causing shearing stress due to this twist. Compute the corresponding shear stresses in each shaft if modulus of rigidity is equal to 83,000 megapascals. The formations on the flanges and bolts are assumed to have negligible effects. So in this case, we can see that the shaft has a rotation here. Okay. So basically, because this is restrained, there will be a torque reaction on both ends and uh, we are going to label that say a b and c so the next step is to have the conditions on the problem it is obvious that there will be a rotation at b so therefore theta b is simply equal to 10 degrees okay but take note that in this formula we are having a result of radians okay but not in degrees so therefore we need to convert 10 degrees first before we can further expand this formula so, 10 degrees will now be converted into radians. So, remember that in 180 degrees, there is a pi radians. Okay. So, let us compute that one. And that will be equal to 0 0.175 radians. Now we can con con uh, expand. Now our torque TL over JG. So to avoid confusion now, let us investigate what is theta B really equal to. So we say that theta A, theta B is equal to theta. A, B. And this one is equal to TL over JG of the segment AB. Right? Okay. So, by that, we can substitute. This is torque at AB. And then one, what is the length of AB? That is equal to 2,500 millimeters. And then, uh, what is our J for that one? So, 
that is a solid shaft, we have pi over 32. And the diameter is 30. 30 raised to 4. And then we have here 83,000 mega pascals. So anyway, by cross multiplication and division, we can right away get the value of the torque on AB. And that is equal to 460,787.16 millimeters. So no, knowing the torque here, by the way, the unknown here is the corresponding shear stresses and you know the shear stress is equal to TR over J so in each in each of the segment we need the value of the torque okay so one of the torque was already acquired so we will go for the other one okay so how shall we determine the other torque okay so we will use the concept wherein both ends are restrained so therefore we can say that t theta ac okay theta a to c will have no rotation because that is restrained so you can expand this that is theta a b okay plus theta b c is equal to zero okay so next we know that theta a b is theta b equivalent to 0 0.175 and then plus theta b c t l over g g g of b c we have torque at b c times l of b c 1.5 j is pi all over 32 times 50 raised to 4 and then multiplied by the same modulus of rigidity and this shall be equal to 0 so if you notice this expression will be transposed to the right side of the equation therefore that will be negative so and thus we can have a negative value for torsion so negative just simply means that your rotation is negative okay so by cross multiplication and manipulation let us solve for bc we have 5,941,618.92 Newton millimeter. Okay. So, knowing all of those values, we are now ready to employ this formula. Okay. So, let us start with the stress AB equal to TR lover G so the torque AB is 460 787.16 so the radius is 15 okay the mo uh, the polar moment of inertia all over 32 times 30 
raised to 4. So we will obtain now shear stress at AB. So we'll be having 86.92 megapascal for AB. Okay. And then we apply the same. We do the same for the stress of the other segment. See, this is DC. So all we have to do is to replace the values here. So the torque is this one. Let's copy this. So the sign here does not matter because uh, sign only refers to the direction of the rotation. So the, the radius is 25 millimeter and this shall be 50 okay so we compute then we have 242.08 megapascal so uh, this is BC okay so these are the answers Okay, so as simple as that. So I suggest that you have to practice more on this. So thank you and good day.